The central dogma of molecular biology, DNA makes RNA, makes protein. Here the process begins. Transcription factors assemble at a specific promoter region along the DNA. The length of DNA following the promoter is a gene, and it contains the recipe for a protein. A mediator protein complex arrives carrying the enzyme RNA polymerase. It maneuvers the RNA polymerase into place, inserting it with the help of other factors between the strands of the DNA double helix. The assembled collection of all these factors is referred to as the transcription initiation complex, and now it is ready to be activated. The initiation complex requires contact with activator proteins, which bind to specific sequences of DNA known as enhancer regions. These regions may be thousands of base pairs distant from the start of the gene. Contact between the activator proteins and the initiation complex releases the copying mechanism. The RNA polymerase unzips a small portion of the DNA helix, exposing the bases on each strand. Only one of the strands is copied. It acts as a template for the synthesis of an RNA molecule, which is assembled one subunit at a time by matching the DNA letter code on the template strand. The subunits can be seen here entering the enzyme through its intake hole, and they are joined together to form the long messenger RNA chain snaking out of the top. Once a gene has been located and transcribed into mRNA, it must first be edited before it can be translated into a protein. This editing process is called splicing. It involves removing non-coding regions called introns, leaving only the protein coding exons. In the cell, the introns are removed by special enzymes which recognize specific sequences. These enzymes cut and rejoin the coding regions for translation into protein. The job of this mRNA is to carry the gene's message from the DNA out of the nucleus to a ribosome for production of the particular protein that this gene codes for. There can be several million ribosomes in a typical eukaryotic cell. These complex catalytic machines use the mRNA copy of the genetic information to assemble amino acid building blocks into the three-dimensional proteins that are essential for life. Let's see how it works. The ribosome is composed of one large and one small subunit that assemble around the messenger RNA, which then passes through the ribosome like a computer tape. The amino acid building blocks, that's the small glowing red molecules, are carried into the ribosome attached to specific transfer RNAs. That's the larger green molecules also referred to as tRNA. The small subunit of the ribosome positions the mRNA so that it can be read in groups of three letters known as a codon. Each codon on the mRNA matches a corresponding anticodon on the base of a transfer RNA molecule. The larger subunit of the ribosome removes each amino acid and joins it onto the growing protein chain. As the mRNA is ratcheted through the ribosome, the mRNA sequence is translated into an amino acid sequence. There are three locations inside the ribosome, designated the A site, the P site, and the E site. The addition of each amino acid is a three-step cycle. First, the tRNA enters the ribosome at the A site and is tested for a codon-anticodon match with the mRNA. Next, provided there is a correct match, the tRNA is shifted to the P site, and the amino acid it carries is added to the end of the amino acid chain. 
The mRNA is also ratcheted on three nucleotides, or one codon. Thirdly, the spent tRNA is moved to the E site and then ejected from the ribosome to be recycled. As the protein synthesis proceeds, the finished chain emerges from the ribosome. It folds up into a precise shape determined by the exact order of amino acids. Thus, the central dogma explains how the four-letter DNA code is, quite literally, turned into flesh and blood.